Hey everyone, my name is Thomas Irwin. This is a short video on how I made Fight Until the End. Okay, so I'm going to split this video into two parts. The first part is going to be an insight into how I started the song and the inspiration behind it. And the second part is going to be more production based. I think I'm going to show you the individual layers and some of the mixing. And I'll hop into the original project session because these are just bounced out stems. Um, so you can see the full composition. And yeah, I think it'll be pretty cool. So let's get into it. So for me, when I make a new song, I don't really have a set formula. I know some producers are able to start with a drop or a build up. For me, each song kind of varies. Uh, one thing I always do is play about on a piano, come up with new chords, new melodies, and um, kind of work from that. So uh, this song is no different, really. This is how it started, the original idea. Getting this first initial idea is one of the most important things because once I've got this, I can just build on top of it and pretty much the whole track came about because of this idea. So I'm now going to show you guys one of the most important things about the song in my opinion and that's the use of organic instruments. The track is absolutely loaded with strings literally throughout the whole song, uh, whether they're at the start here or this string hook here. Or the fiddle loop in the chorus. The breakdown. Even the main drop lead. Some other instruments I used include the bass guitar. Electric guitar. Layered acoustic guitar. And even the use of organic drums. So if there's any advice I can give you from creating this track, it's that if your song is sounding a bit flat or a bit 2D, experiment with the use of real instruments. You can really add so much depth and emotion to a song that otherwise could sound quite flat. Okay, so I'm here in the original project session. I'm going to go through some of the more important layers of the song, some of the more recognisable ones, and basically break down exactly how I did it, the mixing, etc. So to start with, we're going to go to the string plucks right at the beginning. They sound like this. It's basically made up of two layers. You've got the contact instrument and you've got a silent one patch. For the silent one patch, I'm using the key rose preset. Without any additional processing, it sounds quite dry and flat. But with EQ, compression, some OTT, delay and reverb, it brings the sound to life. I'm sending both these layers also to a bus where I can glue them together more and then use sidechain. Next, I want to look at something I've been getting a lot of questions about and that's the drop lead. People have asked me if it's a real recording or a VST and to be truthful it's actually a combination of both. So for the real recordings I can show you here that I've got a few layers of fiddle recording. And a wide violin. And also I have a synth layer. and a white noise layer as well. Make sure guys, if you're going to layer, you layer with purpose, otherwise your mix could get cluttered up very quickly. Just like the string plucks, I routed everything to a bus, and there I could do loads of additional bus processing to kind of shape the sound that I was after. One plugin that really helped me out was definitely Soothe. Due to all the live recordings, I had a lot of resonant frequencies, and Soothe, with its incredible dynamic response, helped me out a ton. Okay, let's talk about the bass. This is how the drop bass sounds on its own. It's made up of three layers. You've got a top bass, a middle bass, 
and a sub bass. You can probably tell that the middle bass seems quite wide and there's always speculation about how your bass should be in mono but I think as long as everything below 100 hertz, especially a sub bass is mono and clean it's okay to have a wide bass because it can really give that fat sensation to a mix. Like usual these three layers are going to a bass bus where I've got more processing to make them all sound cohesive and fat. This includes distortion, compression, a bit of EQ and the side chain. If we look at the drop percussion, you can see it's quite a simple rhythm, it's just got a few layers to it. So it all starts with the kick, then you've got the claps, you've got a ride, you've got a drum loop underneath that I've chopped up, tambourine loop, cowbell, and a bit of air candy to spice it up. I'm sure you're getting used to me saying this by now, but I've got everything going to one bus and on there I've got my favourite drum bus compressor, which is the Waves H-Comp and this helps add more punch and coercion to the percussion. Okay guys, thank you for watching this short breakdown. I hope you learned one or two things, I hope it was insightful. Make sure to check out my Instagram also. Big shout out to Dharma and Spinner Records for making this happen. Cheers, guys. Let's begin.